Okay, this is uh, English 101. This is uh, week 12, part 9. And this is the spring of 2021. So we're now going to wrap up the Walker piece right now in this video, which is good. Um, so Walker only has one paragraph. So let's take a look at it and, and, and see what we can do with it. So this is, this is the end of it. Um, focus. Maybe if we all tried to read our fears, meaning sort of pay attention to them, think about them, interpret them, understand them, figure out which ones are real rational fears we should have and which ones are stupid fears we should ignore. Maybe if we all tried to read our fears, we too would be less often swayed by the most salacious among them. Salacious means like, um, uh, it's, it, those are the gross ones. Those are like the, 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 the ones that are exciting. Um, the can cannibals are exciting, but they're less likely, maybe not likely at all, than starving to death. So maybe we'd spend less time worrying about serial killers and plane crashes and more time concerned with the subtler and lower disasters we face, the silent buildup of plaque in our arteries, the gradual changes to our climate. Just as the most nuanced stories in literature are often the richest, so too might our subtlest fear be the truest. Read in the right way, our fears are an amazing gift of the imagination, a kind of everyday clairvoyance that's seeing into the future, a way of glimpsing what might be the future when there's still time to influence how that future will play out. Properly read, our fears can offer us something as precious as our favorite works of literature, a little wisdom, a bit of insight, and a version of that most elusive thing, the truth. And that is the end of it. We did it. So a couple of things... Um, so her, her point is, the, and I think she makes, she has some really good examples here in the end that pe we often fear things like serial killers. Serial killers is a great example, actually. I really like that example of hers. Um, we often fear things like plane crashes and serial killers. And we ignore things like how eating bad, eating foods that are unhealthy are not good for your heart or eating too much candy is bad for your teeth or, you know, uh, pollution in the environment is damaging the environment. Um, because serial killers and plane crashes are exciting and like, they're, they're the kinds of things you'd want to see a movie about, you know, they're, they're like exciting and they grab your imagination. They're like terrifying and upsetting and creepy and weird and, you know, but the thing about it is that, and, and, and learning about healthy eating is fucking boring. It's really boring. Um, and that 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 kind of you know staying away from sugar because it's bad for your teeth or trying not to pollute because it'll damage the environment those are much less exciting than plane crashes and serial killers i mean just for starters i would definitely watch a movie about plane crashes and i would definitely watch a movie about serial killers but i would probably not watch a movie about how to eat healthier and i would probably not watch a movie about you know how pollution is damaging our environment right but the thing is just because i would watch a movie about it doesn't mean that that's the thing I should be scared of. Because the thing is, is serial killers are fucking terrifying. They're also really rare. <laughs> um, it's just not like, it just doesn't happen that often. Um, uh, it's, it's very, very scary, but it's not something you're likely to bump into. Serial killers are, they're, they're not rare at all on television, there's tons of TV shows about serial killers and podcasts about serial killers and movies about serial killers. They're very, very rare. Um, whereas people dying of heart attacks is extremely common. Um, so you should probably be more worried about your heart attacks and eating healthy than you should about um, serial killers. I'll give you a better example. Let's. I, I got an example for you. Ah, I do. I mean, I'm ready for this. So, a lot of people in America love guns. Um, and they want the guns because I got I got I need a gun so I can protect my family, um, and and they want to do that because they, in their imagination, in their fearful imagination, they're picturing a situation in which enemies, home invaders, break into their house in the middle of the night and smash all the windows and climb through, and the invaders have guns and they take your family hostage, and that if you had a gun, you could fight them off. So people are like, I'm a man, and I'm going to get a bunch of guns, keep my family safe. What most people don't like to think about is that if you would like to keep your family, if you're a man, and you have a wife and a child, and all you want to keep your family safe, 
the way to keep your family safe is not by buying a gun. Actually, buying a gun puts your family in danger because it makes it more likely that your kid is going to go find that gun and shoot himself or your wife or you or a friend with that gun, right? Um, I mean, again, you can lock it up and keep the bullets separate from the thing. But like, if you're not, you know, you got to secure your gun so little kids can't get it. But a lot of people don't do that. But they say, I got to have a gun so I can protect my family. Here's the fucked up thing that I will tell those people. If you really care about protecting your family, if you're a dad and you're like, I got to protect my family, I got some advice for you. I read this off the internet, by the way. I'm not making this up. Um, if, I don't, but I don't remember where I, wear it, where I read it, so I can't give you a citation on it. But if you're a man who's like, I got to protect my family, don't buy a gun. Because home invasion, while very scary, is not very likely. So if you are a dad and all you want to do is protect your family, here's what you're going to do. Go fucking grocery shopping. You know what will protect your family? Healthy food. Go grocery shopping all the time and buy lots of healthy food. Your wife and child need vegetables. They need to eat healthy stuff. Don't, don't, don't get sugar cereals. I got a lot of sugar cereal here. But don't, don't get that stuff. You need to get healthy food for your family. No, I want to get a gun because I'm going to protect it. No, no, no. Because the home invaders that you're worried about, that's really unlikely. Whereas eating unhealthy is a very common problem in America. And you can protect your family by going grocery shopping. And they're like, no, no, I want to protect my – because they want to protect their family in a manly way because they want to have a gun because what they really want to do is shoot people. And so they love their brains. Imagine people breaking into the home, and they're going to fucking shoot them as they climb through the windows and protect their family and be a hero. Here's the real way to be a hero. Buy your family healthy groceries. Oh, is that not enough for you? Here's another way to be a hero. Do some fucking laundry. Oh, that's woman's work. You don't want to do that. If you want to keep your family healthy, do laundry. Little kids – they pee and poop in their pants. And that is not healthy to have that bacteria around the house. It's not good to have it in a diaper. It's not good to have kids get pee and poop everywhere. And they wipe their snotty noses on everything. Um, cl- clean the house and do laundry. That'll keep your family safe. You can use Lysol wipes to keep bacteria off of the sink. And you can you know, vacuum and mop and wipe down surfaces and clean things and do laundry. You get good laundry detergent and get all the bacteria off of their clothes. And make sure you teach your kids to wash their hands. But see... Do you see how that's not sexy or interesting? What's ex- what the, what's exciting is someone breaking into your home and you have a gun and you blow them away because you're a man or whatever. But see, because these guys claim they want to help their families. But what they really want to do is shoot somebody. If they really wanted to help their families, they would go grocery shopping and buy healthy food and they would do the fucking laundry and they would teach their kids to wash their hands. Because little kids, by the way, you have to basically wash your hands next to the little kid every day. Before every meal, every time you get home, you got to wash your hands. And you got to stand there and wash your hands while a little kid washes his hands. You gotta, first, you got to wash their hands, and then you got to stand next to them when they wash their hands to make sure they're really washing their hands. But see, that's not exciting. That's not sexy because the fear of someone breaking into your house is way more exciting but not likely to happen. Whereas the fear of your family getting sick from not eating healthy – uh, you know, from plaque in their arteries, from eating fatty foods, or sick from bacteria in the house is not sexy at all, but it's very, very likely to happen. And so if you want to protect your family, you're going to want to, um, if you want to protect your family, you are for sure going to want to do laundry and get healthy food for your family. Um, but that's an example of people have fears, but people's fear is often of home invasion. See, but that's not likely to happen. I guess you could prepare for that if you want to. But if you really care about protecting your family, you got to kind of think about your fear a little bit and be like, actually, you know what's more scary than a home invasion? Having a family that has plaque buildup, that's eating unhealthy and their teeth are bad and their heart is bad from bad food and they have bacteria on them on the sink and in their clothing because of laundry. And, you know, so do groceries, go do grocery shopping and clean your home to keep everybody safe. It's not sexy, but like that's a lesson you can learn uh, from thinking about fear. Um, and notice, by the way, none of it works. If you say, I refuse to be afraid of everything. Well, then you're not, then I guess you're, you don't have a gun, which is good, I guess. But also if you, if you refuse to be afraid, you're also not doing laundry and you're also not keeping your family safe by doing laundry or buying healthy groceries. So, uh, you got to sit there and think about your fears with your brain.
even though it's going to come up with scary things and you got to figure out which ones are worth paying attention to and which ones are not. Just like if you're reading a story, you might get very excited about the story, but then you got to stop and think about the story and decide what you want to learn from it. Okay. I'll see you guys in, I think the next video, if I guess I'll do another one. I don't know. Maybe this is the end of it.